Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Um, let's chat a bit about Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy. Um, this was uh, Tolstoy's very last novel, um, and I just completed reading it. Um, it was published originally in 1899 in, um, in Russian, and then in 1900 uh, it was published in English the very next year. Um, I actually read um, an edition that was put out in 2015, but it is that original 1900 edition, uh, from what I can gather, um, that was translated by um, Louise Maud, who I think did uh, quite a quite a bit of translation um, at the time from Russian into English, and. You know, the interesting thing, one of the interesting things about this book was that Tolstoy himself donated the proceeds of this book to a pacifist sect called the, I wrote it down, the Dukobar, du Dukobors, uh, and I'm not, I might be mispronouncing that. And Louise May, in the translator notes, um, remarks that she uh, donates any proceeds that she got for her translation, also was donated to this pacifist sect. And ultimately, that's how I heard about the book, or, you know, I, I actually wasn't that familiar with it. Um, I've read Anna Karenina by Tolstoy, and back in probably high school, I gave War and Peace a try and didn't make it through the whole way. Um, but Resurrection I wasn't really familiar with until last year I read a book called The Glorious Art of Peace, and I did a video chat on that, so I'll put a link to the video chat for The Glorious Art of Peace down in the notes below. But um, it is mentioned, uh, Resurrection's mentioned um, in the glorious art of peace because this, because of this pacifist sect and it kind of piqued my interest about the book and so I decided you know that I wanted to get it read and so I put it on this year's TBR and I'm really glad that I did because it turned out to be such a great read um, and I'll, I will go into it a bit more in a moment um, but just what the story itself is about is um, there is a a wealthy aristocratic prince um who is living in russia you know this is the late 19th century he's living in moscow and he's living this life of luxury really um he's got kind of a girlfriend um and then he's also um uh, you know having an affair with someone he knows wife and he's sort of living this life of sort of debauchery and luxury and idleness um and he um is ultimately called to be on a jury and so when he goes to be on this jury there are these people being tried for um, for murder and one of the folks being tried there is a prostitute who he recognizes from earlier in his life she was um, a servant to um, his uh, aunts that he stayed with when he was younger who he actually got pregnant so he starts getting sort of racked with guilt over this because he feels like he's played a part in um, you know what has happened to her in the ensuing years you know and he's remembering back to his more idealistic youth when he was younger um, and when he was more ideal idealistic and more innocent and more um, you know more he felt he was better a better person and he he realizes how far he's he's moved from there from from the person he wanted to be to the person he was now so he sort of have, he has this change of consciousness and then he see he goes in on this journey of trying to to redeem himself um, specifically by helping um, by helping this woman, this prisoner. And I won't go into everything that happens, but what he ends up doing is uh, go take, going on this journey through the legal system of late 19th century Russia um, and meeting all types of people and learning all kinds of things and um, really uh, uncovering um, a lot of the ills of, of the society of, of that time. Um, how the criminal justice system works, how the justice system is flawed, um, how the class system operates, how wealth is distributed differently, how privilege is distributed differently. Um, he comes to realize the people in his class um, aren't that 
much morally better. They're not morally better than than the people in the lower ends of the of society. Only the people in lower ends of society, you know, get punished differently. And um, so he has this change of consciousness. Um, like I said, um, through um, through through his experience. Um, he takes us on this journey, uh, on his journey of redemption, actually ends up leading him all across Russia. Won't give that away too much uh, either, but, um, you know, as he's trying to redeem himself with this woman, um, we uh, we sort of go along on that journey with him. And, you know, the really, the interesting, one of the interesting things that I took away from the book was how relevant it still is now. So I mentioned this is from the late 19th century, Russia. Um, so it's when it still, you know, has the czar and such. Um, but it really, you know, large parts of the book are really relevant now because what it deals with is how, um, you know, justice, um, especially the justice system, I think, is um, weighted towards people who have money and who have privilege and who has who have position um, are able to manipulate that system differently than people who do not and the people who do not don't have a lot of recourse then um, once uh, decisions have been made um, unless there's someone out there that's in a position to advocate for them which um, this prince um, the 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 main character of this book actually you know uses his he tries to use his privilege um, you know, to help her and then later lots of other people um, that he meets, um, other prisoners um, and others. Um, and so he tries to use his position to help him, help them. And he's sort of in a quandary because, you know, one thing is he starts to abhor the class he belongs to in a way, but then at the same time, he needs it in order to, um, you know, to, he needs to work within it in order to help these people. And so that's sort of perplexing, you know, what to do in that situation, um, you know, when to, where to draw that line. Um, so, cause he needs to be able to, you know, call on favors and things like that. So he doesn't want to be part of the system, but he feels like he has to, um, to help, um, you know, to help help them. Although he does, you know, sort of stick to his own principles and, and make some pretty radical changes in his life. He makes some very radical changes in his life and in his, uh, you know, his landed estates and with the peasants that he has control over that work hit the land he owns. Um, he does make some really radical changes there. But, you know, I thought that question was really interesting because it's really relevant, you know, even now where, you um, sometimes to 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 affect change within the system you have to actually go within the system um and then some people don't have as that much access to the system um so you know that's just sort of a perplexing sort of question i think of how to affect social change that he asks himself in the novel and explores that in the novel um, and then another thing that I, I really took away from the novel was, um, you know, the biases of people, um, because many times in the novel, uh, people make people in power um, make these decisions uh, based on bias and I, not necessarily power, meaning the czar. And I'm not talking necessarily about these pe types of people, but, you know, everyone has their own power. Um, and so everyone has power over certain situations and over certain people at different points in their life. So, um, and, and how you use that with others, um, uh, really can make a difference. Um, and how, but how much bias can, can really, can really affect that? Um, there's a real, really interesting, um, scene in the book where, um, the character, um, Maslova, the woman, um, you know, she gets accused of, um, of, I guess, trying to seduce a medical assistant in the prison um, for whatever reason. And because of her past, um, you know, as a prostitute, which is well known, um, she sort of assumed, people just assume, you know, they, they sort of assume that she must have been guilty of that when she actually, you know, wasn't. Um, and even the prince, uh, who really um, is is on her side, also thinks this uh, at first. So, you know, bias, um, you know, it's a powerful thing. Um, 
So another thing is how easily, um, another thing I took away was how easily suffering is dismissed by people. Um, so how easy it is to look at other suffering as their own fault, meaning they had to have done something. This is, re this is a theme repeated over and over in the book, in the novel, about how the prisoners, many of whom are innocent, um, are at least, by the very least, um, if not totally innocent, then um, they haven't done that much different than people um, who are not in prison uh, and would never be in prison, meaning the wealthy, for such a, for a similar act, um, or they are um, they're completely innocent, or they um, they were given a sentence like way too too strict for 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 what they've done in the case of, for example, Maslova, the woman. Um, and how, but how easily it is that people even today um, dismiss uh, you know the sufferings of others as you know they brought that on themselves or you know they're getting what they deserve and you know this kind of thing. So I thought that was that was kind of that was kind of interesting um, as well. And um, so yeah. Um, I think you know the other another really kind of interesting thing that that I, that I took away from the book was the um, at the end or the prince like I said is a is a is a wealthy person and so this is like 1900 Russia so you know their revolution was uh, in 1917 I think but you know it was all kind of brewing at the time um, the the prince in the in the novel doesn't. Um, he may, you know, he's very careful to see um, how um, the wealthy are. He sees he he, he doesn't. The, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that the wealthy people are not portrayed as just cardboard villains, and the you know the the prisoners as victims. It's not that cardboard of a story. It's not that it's not that kind of a black and white kind of story. Um, it's that they the sometimes many most of the time actually people don't actually mean to be mean um, in the book. Um, they actually have convinced themselves often that they're not being mean, that they're actually being you know kind or that they're being considerate. Um, and then you know from the outside you know we see that that they're they're actually not. So it was just a really good. I thought it was very good. Um, really good take on human nature. Um, you know, another thing that really got brought out to me was the, the political prisoners, how um, it, it, it's remarked that, you know, the political prisoners often are just like, they're all, it's like a, a, a giant net uh, brings in a bunch of prisoners that are considered to be as maybe associated with um, an unfavorable opinion at the time, uh, unfavor unfavorable political opinion at the time, and many of them are innocent. Um, but the system, once they collect them all in, can't once they sort out that out, they don't actually re they don't actually address the people who are there unlawfully and the people unlawfully that are there unlaw that are there. Um, unjustly um, often are just sort of left still to to be in prison and serve out their sentences and that's you know reminded me a lot of here in the US of what what happened with the Guantanamo prisoners where there was this wide net of people that were captured and many many if not most of them actually had nothing to do with anything but yet it was years and years and years before before they got released so you know, I just thought the book was super relevant um, still today. I'm really glad that I that I got a chance to read it. I I do now want to read a little more Tolstoy. I have a book about War and Peace coming up, um, and a chat should be coming up for that uh, real soon because I'm almost finished with that. So stay tuned for that. Until then, take care. Bye.